Hi there everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be talking about a condition called a choroidal nevus. A choroidal nevus is essentially a pigment spot in the back of one's eye and choroidal nevi by definition are benign. If you would like to learn more about this condition then please stay tuned. Nevi tend to be an incidental finding, i.e. patients tend to have no symptoms and through a routine eye examination they can be detected. Thankfully the um, instance of transformation from a benign nevi to a more sinister type of melanoma is very low. Nevi can be present in up to 10% of the population. As mentioned, they tend to be picked up incidentally, but occasionally they can cause symptoms. Depending on the location that they are present at, the symptoms can vary somewhat. For example, patients may report reduced visual acuity, which may be associated with serous types of retinal detachments. The important thing when assessing a choroidal nevi or nevus is to ensure that you accurately completely classify the presence um, of it. This will include its size, its diameter, its depth, whether it is associated with a surrounding fluid, whether it has surface features such as lipofuscin, whether it, there's drusen present. Um, these are all important aspects of a thorough assessment of a choroidal nevus. Also, its proximity to the disc is another important feature that one must note. The first thing that one should do when faced with a coronal nevus is to ensure that after it has been accurately classified, you ascribe it a label such as a benign coronal nevus. The only way that this can be done is if one works through a checklist and rules out sinister features that could indicate that this pigmented lesion is actually not a nevus in fact, it could be a melanoma. So therefore, a systematic approach is fundamentally important. Features that would concern you as to the potential underlying etiology or cause of the benign pigment lesion are its thickness and whether its thickness is greater than two millimeters, whether there's the presence of orange lipofuscin pigment on the surface, the presence of fluid, subretinal fluid namely, the presence of the patient reported symptoms, the margin of the nevus being less than three millimeters from the disc, and also ultrasonic hollowness. In the absence of some of these red flag features, the lesion is more than likely to be a benign choroidal nevus as opposed to a choroidal melanoma. If no suspicious features are present with respect to the pigmented lesion that you're faced with, then typically these patients are photographed and reviewed annually for a few years in the hospital eye service, at which point they are discharged back to the community where their optometrists can perform the same monitoring role. Patients are also advised appropriately about what symptoms to look out for and what to do in such an instance or occurrence. Thank you for watching this short video about choroidal nevi. I hope you have learned a bit about what choroidal nevi are and the other important condition that needs to be ruled out before a coronal nevus is diagnosed. As ever, please do subscribe to my channel, click the bell icon, the like button, and please do comment. Thank you so much. Until next time, take care.